Steve now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 446th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch. Here today with my adventuring co-host, we have the man, the myth, the legend. I use this for a lot of people, but it's Dr. Shamu. <laughs> so it, it, that's what I, I mean at this time. It's been a while. It's been months. <laughs> yeah, but like you're actually you're like the perfect person for this. I think for like today's 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 like lineup of topics that we have. This is going to be <laughs> a beefy show. Our, our lineup of topic. Yeah, topics. It's like okay. Topic. So like well, we know what the topic is. It's a topic. I don't think there's more than like. <laughs> okay, okay. For the topic today, but like so like the new segment today is like its own topic. I guarantee it. Uh, okay, and then we also have uh, we also have the uh, the Lord. The Lord Yushiro. Uh, <laughs> Some say Yushiro. So it, uh, for say. the perfectness that is Shamu for this topic, I am here to balance it with being completely um, not qualified for this, but I'll be here to support. <laughs> <laughs> Yushiro is our emotional support, but welcome to the Puckle po- Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007, and we still use to this day because branding. <laughs> consistent branding those are important things to have so <laughs> welcome to the show we talk everything pokemon from the video game to the trading card game today is very 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 much video game uh though there there is one cool thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about the trading card game because both of you will be really cool about that um did you get you guys I, i'm sure because i know both Sh- at least shamu knows about this they've got like that trainer pack coming out this week oh yeah no uh I need it's to- like 30 bucks and you get like two to dene gx no, no, that thing. No, that thing is busted. No, you get two that. You get two bosses orders, which is like a ten dollar, fifteen dollar card. Yeah, yeah. Is it a battle it's arena battle? It, deck? No, no. It's like no, it's like no, a trainer no. starter kit or something or toolbox or something. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> we got, they really they announced it a long time ago, but we finally got like confirmation of what's in it. It's got those mm-hmm. alternate art to Dene's, and it comes with two of those. It comes with two boss orders. It comes with all the like the certain artists that they like the poke pad or. Poke gear at the mother cards and his art. Yeah. Though they're in there too, like reset stamps. It's like it's like a hundred and some cards. It's like a hundred and fifty. You're, you're cards getting like a hundred dollar value in a thirty dollar thing. Yeah, Ooh. I'm totally buying one this week. I don't even play the TCG right now. I don't oh, even play it. Would, if you, can <laughs> I mean, them, unless you you're in TCGO, that? there's really no way of you playing it right now. Yeah, I mean, I play I play the TCGO because like we have our we have a puckle account for it now. But like, yeah. I, I I play that. I play around with that, and then. Like I, I mean, also I don't. I, I'm not into the scene here. Um, I'll be completely honest. Like in Dayton, I'm I'm not really into the scene. Um, if somebody's <laughs> into the scene and listens to the show, like hit me up and then we'll be friends. That's how I got into the Columbus scene, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because Beaverlo was in the Columbus scene and he said, "Hey, you should come and play." And I said, "Okay, sure." And then I started I started going to like weekly league nights and stuff like that. So it was it was a lot of fun. I'm. But uh, honestly, my answer is always my friend circle is full until it's not, you know, uh, <laughs> until you reach out and you say, hey, let's go. But yeah, I, I heard about that. And I just thought I think that's nuts. Like they, they put out a lot of product like recently. That's just like really, really nice. Like that Picaram deck. So like a couple yeah, of weeks, it months, like a month ago. Too. Yeah. Like, OK. And they're actually in good supply because like, yeah, they're, exactly. they're continually being stocked. They're not like and gone. They're, and that's yeah. price control. That's how you control the prices in your game. So it doesn't go out of control. I've never yeah. seen anything like that from well, Pokemon. Most, most card games don't even do that, to be honest. Mm-mm, They'll do yeah. it, no, they do they it don't. Like, later. Like, yeah. well, look like, at Magic the Gathering. None, 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 none is a better Magic example than them. It, but they do it very spaced out, very spaced out. Yeah, yeah. But um, like Yu Gi Oh is one too. They do it, but they don't. They either space things out or they just like let something rise to like insane amounts, and then like two years later they'll yeah. Maybe no, Pokemon's right. been handling it really well because that was like my big problem when I was playing. It's like, I think this is the most I've seen something just like prices get killed in a short yeah. amount of time like they mm. hit they hit boss orders immediately there's the na hit immediately jirachi hit again like they just hit like the top cards you need to they add, also like, did zashin v as well with the tin yeah and like, that should be the barrier to entry is just gone you just well yep. not gone but you need to spend a little bit of money but it's reasonable 
it's much more reasonable. I'd much rather go spend 25 bucks on a tin and make sure I get yeah. a Dash and V. And it's, it's smart more... business pros- uh, uh, decisions. Yeah. Why not yeah. just get the They'll money get directly products. from your customers than having, you know, being reselled on the internet? Yeah. I, exactly. Yeah. I absolutely agree. I mean, you could just sell the card yourself, right? Like, why make somebody have to dig through? Like, I understand digging through booster packs and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, just evaluate it after some point. Who cares? It's not like I'm still not going to buy. That's what Yu-Gi-Oh did at one point too. Yeah, they did a they did like the trainer kit, but with the other card. They didn't do like a two of each or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. They did no, like, I agree. Like that. forty cards with some alt arts mm-hmm. and they're foil, but we're gonna charge you like forty bucks. Yeah. They were higher. It was higher, and it was like a like a foil and stuff. But it was the fact that like you didn't just you get play you get half a playset. So you spent spend sixty bucks and you get everything in there. You get a full playset. Yeah, no, that's, that's exciting. I, we don't know everything else at the moment, but it's a lot. Of, it's supposed to be a bunch of like supporters and like generic staple-ish cards. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I've been getting into it more and more, but I don't know why. Because like again, I don't play physical, so I don't know why I'm doing this. But yeah, so I guess we can pivot real hard now uh, <laughs> <laughs> and ask you guys what you've been up to this week in Pokemon. Well, that or, or basically... since the last time you were on, but yeah, I mean, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I know Shamu's been doing more. <laughs> I, I've been there's a bunch of stuff going on right now. Yeah, no, it's a crazy busy time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mainly like recently I own the Varmer, which a yes, lot of people absolutely. Not, not everyone, but a lot of people are playing. The which one? Isle of Armor. That's Isle the new Armor. DLC. Oh, oh oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean that's what the that's that's what the episode title is probably. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, the most Pokemon I've been able to get this week, unfortunately, it's been a, a tough week at work. But I have been trying to keep up with my Pokemon Masters, uh, uh, so that's something you, Pokemon you, related. Didn't try Pokemon Brush Your Teeth. <laughs> I, I might just <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon I Brush Your Teeth. I almost downloaded it. I thought about it. I I would uh, I would lie. I would be lying if I said I didn't try, think about it. <laughs> I'm honestly it was like, come on, who would do this? App the answer is us. The answer is all of us. <laughs> smile. Yep. Download. Who would do this? Download. I mean, I did. I did a few things too. I mean, I'll, obviously, like Isle of Armor has been my week. Um, we've done a couple of streams for that. I've also been. Uh, I, I've also been working on a few other minor things. Like I ordered Puckle TCG mats this week, so that's exciting. Nice. Those will be coming next week sometime. Uh, so if you want to puckle TCG mat, let us know. I, if, it, if there's enough interest, we might do it annually. Because like, we always have cool designs that would be cool to put on a TCG mat. Mm-hmm. And they're always necessary because this yeah. year's play mats will not last me to next year. And even then, like you can use them as a mouse pad even if you don't play TCG, which is 100% exactly. what I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I have my old one was. Yeah. The only thing is it accidentally got like a little bit of something on like. A oh, yeah. No, no. Av- like, like my my mats typically last me maybe I would say like three months and then I'll spill something on it. And it's like, cool. Well, next mat. <laughs> Gives me an excuse to buy another one. Well, it's just the fact that this is like the OG Puckle one. So it's like, well, oh, it's yeah, that one. Yeah, that one's that's... gone. It's gone. Uh, yeah, I'm like, once mm, it's gone. I don't well, know. You I know what we should that. do? We should dig real deep into the archives and find all of the old logos. And like make a mat with all of the old logos on it. Oh, you want to know what? You can make that tournament Ooh. bracket. Put that on the, <laughs> yeah, the OG tournament bracket. Let's I, have that I think I saved that. I know. An, I have. I know we saved. It's an emote on the server. Yeah. I also have. Um, what is it? Uh, I also have been working on a, a few other smaller projects. But I, also, I did puckle. I did puckle uh, plays this week with Ozzy. That was exciting. That's coming out next week on YouTube. So you can watch me and Ozzy play uh, puckle plays. We did finally get the Electabuzz. So that was cool. Oh, nice. Both of you need to be on, by the way. Both one of you yes. needs to be on at yeah. some point. I well, I was going to be, but now I definitely will be. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to get that going. Because I'll, I'll, I'll wait for other people to go ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart strategy. You, do you not want to be responsible for things dying? Uh, <laughs> oh no, thing is, I'll probably like, I'll probably try to have things die. That's the issue. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'll be the bad influence. So we'll just like I'll, I'll help you ruin the run at the very end. You'll get like yeah. right to the Please victory no. road, and then we'll just ruin the run. Please no. <laughs> No promises. I'm hoping, I'm really, I want to, I, I don't think he's listening, but if Bo's listening, like, hit me up. I want to get you on for this for a specific reason, because I doubt you've watched it yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so on that note, though, I think this is a good place to stop, because, like, those are the things that I've been really working on. Isle of Armor's been fun, though. I, uh, the preview. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let, we've got some other news to talk about, so let's kick it on over and cue that epic music. <laughs> Coming to you 
live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. In the news, we've got quite a bit to talk about. So, uh, what happened this week? In addition to I Love Armor dropping, because I mean, that's obviously the topic we're, we talked about a little bit. That that's the topic. That's the big news. I Love Armor came out. We're a Pokemon podcast. We have to talk about that. But they did more exciting things because they took their normal press conference they typically do in person. And because of obviously COVID, they moved it, moved it to like an online event. So Ishihara gave a quick 11 minute update on a few things that were that are coming out uh, this week. And I think the most exciting one, this is where we're going to start. We're going to start with like most exciting. Oh, because yeah. Why get hyped about anything else? But after 21 years, <laughs> they they decided that they are going to do the new Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch. Hallelujah. It is currently being worked on. It is the successor to Pokemon Snap on the N64, and it's going to include Pokemon up to Generation 8. Uh, there's no release date so far. Um, what's also really cool is this is being developed by Bandai Namco. Bandai Ooh. Namco. Is the name actually new Pokemon Snap? or the Yeah, Pokemon it's Snap actually Nintendo? new Pokemon Snap. Okay, I'm not surprised. Like the new Nintendo 3DS, the <laughs> new Super Mario Bros. Yeah, like I'm not surprised. I'm not, I'm not surprised. Just, I didn't know if it was actually the title. To be fair, it's not like a console, at least, where it's just like, yeah, let's buy Pokemon Snap because the only thing is we're just buying an updated Pokemon Snap, like a very updated Pokemon Snap. If you looked at the visuals they showed for it, it's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. I I just want to I want to make like a couple comments about this because like this is well, that, super exciting. That, that wasn't in engine or anything. I don't believe it, it so said it said game footage not final. That was the thing it said. Yeah. Um, and so some of it might have just been cinematic ish trailers. Um, a lot of people right. are saying like, oh, why can't Switch look this good? And like, I, I mean, people know that I'm not like the biggest fan of Switch, right? But even I'm gonna go. Well, that might not have even been in the game engine. Uh, on top of that, mm-hmm. it's an on rail shooter, so they didn't have so to do much easier. Lo- yeah, it's much easier to animate a rail yeah, shooter. You don't, have to, <laughs> you don't have to worry about people running around in circles or hitting yeah, into weird that, areas. That's and, the wider the Jurassic Park arcade game blew people's mind in the early 2000s. Yeah. It's just when you dedicate a rush rail shooter, you have more, you know. Yeah, abilities to do more you flashy can dedicate things. Much more focused to other areas. Like you're not yeah. going to glitch out a bound on a rail. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like. What what do you expect? I, I think it's also just uh, really cool from a Pokemon community standpoint that they show that they are kind of listening. I don't know. This kind of seems like uh, th- nice. 20, 2020 kind of feels like Pokemon TPCI, like extending the olive branch mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> to its fan base, because I think they know they done screwed up and they yeah. I, I feel like with DLC, Overall. I think DLC, uh, I think 2020. They they screwed up. I think they screwed up with a lot of their dedicated fan base with Dex. Well, yeah, hardcore gamers that that can. But you need yeah. that. You need that. Like mm-hmm. I, I, you can say what you will. Like, oh, it's a vocal minority, but they're also the no, vocal. no. Oh, I'm not. No, I'm not making the assumption that they don't matter. That's not what I yeah, meant. Yeah. It, what yeah. what it mean? It, it's it's hard to classify a whole thing by. Oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, by a small a smaller group in general. Pokemon gave us a movie with Ryan Reynolds. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, no, general no, no. Been doing really well. I, and I would say, I would say, latter half of 2019, the marketing company for TPCI was awful. Right. Uh, I would say the marketing team was awful. I say this year they've been doing a good job, and it, it's very exciting. But yeah. there was more in that press conference. Nothing nearly as exciting as Pokemon Snap. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, I'll let Shamu tell you how exciting these next things are. But Jushiro gets to read them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is Pokemon Cafe Mix, let me tell you, and boy was I n- okay with this. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, that's the right. Couple, that's the right answer. <laughs> that's the right feeling. Um, if you guys are familiar with the puzzle games, this would at first look a little bit familiar. It is very similar to um, help me out with the title Trozai. of uh, Trozai. Trozai. Thank it's you. Like it's Trozai, like Trozai, but it's Trozai. like it's like a different type of puzzle than Trozai. Exactly. And it's like it's like removing the crosshair so you can just draw upon circles yeah, and drag it's things out. It's very interesting. It, it looks decent. Um, it's uh, free to play, but there's additional purchases. Con- uh, pr- uh, no, it's purchase, free to start. Uh, free to start. Of That's- course. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me say that I do like that. Uh, uh, that Nintendo uses that instead of just free to play. I was I was very impre- like I was very unsurprised by everything they announced during this trailer. By the way. Right. Or this yeah. presentation, because like when the presentation was announced and everybody's like getting hyped and I'm like, OK, they're going to talk about the DLC at the end because they said they're going to talk about DLC. I'm like, they're going to announce some app 
that none of us really care about. They're going, <laughs> they're going to announce a free to start game because that's just been their MO. And then they're going to do something that we don't know about. And that's like Detective Pikachu-esque. Yeah. You know? And that, that's 100% what happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, tell us about the mobile app that we don't care about. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, because like, I'm sure that this is the one that Shamu was referring to. Oh, oh. This is the exciting one for Shamu. Right? It is called none other than Pokemon Smile. <laughs> it's a mobile app targeted to children, wink, uh, wink. to encourage healthy teeth brushing habits. Uh, it records you and it would use AR to put funny little Pikachu and Pokemon emotes in your uh, in the screen. So you're... Um, you can brush your teeth and uh, complete brushing exercises and you then uh, able to capture the various Pokemon. It's free to play with no in-game purchases and it's available right now. And uh, it's great. I, none of us have played it. Right. Uh, let's be completely <laughs> honest. Okay. Uh, but... <laughs> I've totally completed the decks already. A hundred times over. I'm, <laughs> my, my teeth are gone now because I brushed them so hard. Somebody, so somebody made, a, uh, made a tweet at Joe Merrick about this because he said he's going to start Pokemon Smile coverage like this weekend <laughs> because he's been busy with the Isle of Armor coverage. And, <laughs> and somebody said, you're going to have the best teeth in all of England. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do this that. challenge. <laughs> For the next PogoCon, when it comes, I'm going to start the Pokemon Smile Challenge. <laughs> and we'll, I'll, I'll take pictures, and then I'll reveal how my difference is by the time of the next PogoCon. I'll do that for you guys. I already brushed my teeth. I hope I don't need Pokemon <laughs> Smile. <laughs> uh, but it's... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Like Pokemon, it, it was it was a. I mean, it's a cool app. Like if I had kids, I'd probably be like, "Yeah, you're going to use this." Mm -hmm. um, but for me, like personally, I mean, we're obviously not the target demographic for Pokemon Smile. <laughs> no, we're kids. No, no, we're the target demographic. We are not like, the target demographic. We, we, well, we act like children. Come on, you can't. Does it say Pokemon? That, that part is true. That part is true. Does it say Pokemon? It does say Pokemon, but I also didn't play it Pokemon. Is, we Camp. are the target. <laughs> I, I I also didn't play Pokemon Camp. <laughs> uh, which was targeted mainly for children. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've done a lot of Pokemon things. I played Magikarp Jump. Literally the dumbest <laughs> game ever. Okay. <laughs> like, like I played I'm some just... dumb Pokemon games. Pokemon, oh, oh my Magikarp God. Jump was the dumbest. That, that was something. <laughs> that, that was a thing. That was a thing that happened. Yes. But yes, that's, uh... that's where we'll end it. Uh, Shambu, what else did they announce? And at the end, they announced that there will be another Direct on June 24th to discuss another this new Wednesday. title. Yeah. And we don't know anything else about it other than that it is a new title. Yeah, they just said mm -hmm. they're going to be discussing something. They're, they're just like, hey, we're going to have another thing. Um, so this is the part where I think it's interesting, just because like you can we can put our speculation hats on. Mm -hmm. and so uh, I've spent a lot of time this week studying up on a lot of things to figure out what it could be because i honestly don't have a good answer i have like mm -hmm. a spreadsheet with percentages and so i just wanted to know what you guys thought is there a variety of things that could be because like again we could get remakes we could get another let's go we could get detective pikachu game we don't know what it could be it, and it's like if it's, a, if it it's an entire time, thing and they made me wake a, it could wait be a week Ranger, for detective it pikachu could be, it could be it could be Ranger, actually. If they're going back, they're finally giving us Nap. They might be going back and giving us, like, remakes of old games. That could, could be, be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I could see, like, it being a suite, you know, uh, could, of like, things. Or maybe even they'll give us a, uh, um, well, I don't know if it would be because it'd be a new, it's not exactly a new title, but they might play it off as it. They might give us, like, a, uh, what's the word? Kind of like how you have, like, the, the, like, the entertainment button with Nintendo, like, where, like, yeah, oh, you get these games yeah. to play. Like, here is a Pokemon game that has all these old ports to play. Like, you get, like, yeah. Snap, mm. Puzzle League. Like Battle a virtual Day, console, you know. but for Pokemon. Like, yeah, yeah, they'll give you, like, all, like, the older N64 and some of the older that's, titles that's, to play. That's thinking that would be. I like Here's that. Here's some pinball, maybe, like, the driving the pinball games as, like, they'll just shove all these fantastic. games into, like, a title on a new port and, like, maybe some. Yeah. That would be, like, Battle Stadium. Like, Pokemon Stadium on a Switch would be actually really nice with the Joy-Cons. Yeah, but there wouldn't be a reason behind it, though. That... No, no, there isn't, though. That's the thing. I'm just yeah. like, I'm just speculating on the fact that we were, we're getting new Snap. They might, they might target that, but we don't. I, know. I feel like they would have done it with Snap if they would have done it. Like they would have been like, "Hey, you can play new Pokemon Snap in like a year, but mm, you can you yeah, can play true. regular Pokemon Snap now, yeah, or like in a month." And I, I could see that 
But I don't know. What about you, Jashira? So I, I started thinking about when I saw that too. What could it be? I mean, Generation Nine, not it, not gonna happen, guys. It's no, no, no. Gen Nine's not happening. That's yeah, not, not happening. happening. We just got we just got Pokemon Snap two announced or new Pokemon Snap where they're just like up to yeah. Gen Eight Pokemon. They still have to yeah. milk Generation Eight Pokemon. They haven't done that. Oh, enough. I mean, it's like every three years, like three years right. is Gen. Like just so, but way. what could it be? It snaps out of the way, so that would have been the option number two or immediately in people's minds. Like, oh, cool, Pokemon Snap! But they just revealed that. What could be bigger than Pokemon Snap returning that would merit its own day? I'm in the same spot. That's where I'm kind of stuck. What could they possibly wait? Why couldn't they just announce it with Pokemon Snap? Pokemon Snap is like a big, huge deal. It's like Half Life Three for Pokemon fans. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> so it's like, w- what could be bigger or what could be so necessary to have its own day separate from the Pokemon Snap announcement? Uh, that's where I'm just, I, I know. So, so from the Pokemon Snap announcement, getting its own thing, my, my immediate thought when that happened was, oh, cool. It's something mainline. Mm. Um, well, maybe not. Oh, cool. I like, I've never felt such anxiety with a Pokemon announcement being announced <laughs> that I did, that I did this. The week. announcement of the announcement. Well, of because, the announcement. because my, so like, so like my big thing from like day one with Swish has been, I hope they finish the Pokedex and like the DLC is in a really good place. And we'll talk more about like how those, how I feel about that later and how you guys feel about it. But I want them to finish the Pokedex. And if they keep on the past, like by the time we're done with crown Tundra, we're going to have, I think something like 600 and, just just about 650 pokemon something around there um out of out of 898 and i would love dlc too uh, i don't think they're going to announce it uh i have a, a, a one to throw out there now that i think yeah. about it uh yeah. pokemon uh that that is something i don't think that's a good idea uh, there, so like there's a lot of bad ideas they could have <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i would love to see something kind of but I don't think Pokken was the greatest launch, and I think they yeah. were expecting a lot more than what I, happened. I think I think Pokken honestly failed because of the Wii U. No other reason. And that could have been it. Honestly, yeah. I I feel that you were correct. I think it could have done better had there been um had the, because had it, it was launched solid. If game. it if it would have launched after this after Swish, I think Pokken mm-hmm. Pokken would have been better. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um, so I so I went through the data. I scrubbed the data. I'm like, so maybe something main series, right? And so I'm like, okay, what are our options? Gen 4 remake, Swish 2, and uh, and Let's Go 2. I'm like, those those are your main series options right now. And I go, Let's Go 2 is a horrible decision. And they weren't really happy with their, their sales. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So like, it, like yeah, I mean, you could say it sold 12 million. That's, that's fine. Let's Go sold 12 million. But since January 2020, it sold less than 2 million mm-hmm. um so that's kind of a let or january 19 2019 um so just keep that in mind it sold less than two million units because yep. uh it also had the first pokemon game on switch mm-hmm. uh behind it and it was it was also kanto pandering it should have been bigger so if you think about that versus the numbers that switch brought not to mention like the attach rate for the dlc has been like crazy already <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so th- it va- I think it makes more economical sense for them just to spend time on more DLC than it does. To, yeah. Than it does. to hundred percent. Than it does to come out with switch Two because people are saying like, uh, let's go Two's happening because look at all the gen two Pokemon he had in the back wall of the presentation. And, uh, yeah, um, there was an interesting thing I saw on Reddit of a guy who's like Pokemon let's go Coliseum. And I'm like, that would be cool. I would probably actually play that. Probably not going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that okay. Not yeah. even to if we can get a new Coliseum or XD game, mm-hmm. oh, oh, I would be all over that. That's I, well, hard. like Let's Go Coliseum sounds like a cool idea too, just because one, I think you'd really integrate the Let's Go mechanics into that very well. Uh, two, you get Shadow Pokemon, which are in Pokemon Go, and you actually get like the cool origins for Shadow Pokemon. Um, yeah. But like it, the guy came up with like a bunch of reasons, which are the same reasons for just like Let's Go Two. And yeah. uh, I was because like there's like an Umbreon and an Espeon plush next to an Eevee in front of Let's Go Eevee in the background. I'm like, yeah, but there's also like oh, I, a Detective yeah. Pikachu amiibo over there and then like two Sandrew statues. And he likes to have the most current plushes sitting on his desk and the most current plushes that they came out with were the Galar ones, which were on top. And then they also had the sitting cuties at Gen 2 and which are the new ones in Japan as well. So I, I just thought like maybe that's it. I don't know. So, like, you have that. But the thing that I found this week that was very interesting is that um, Game Freak or TPCI, not Game Freak, 
is doing a thing with Tencent or Tencent. I forget how to pronounce it. Tencent. Timmy Studios in um, Timmy Studios in the U.S. Uh, or in China, where this is a company that does like a bunch of mobile games, like Raid Shadow Legends. I think they're known for like COD Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile. Okay. Like, well, it's not even just like mobile games. They're known for a lot of apps too. If I remember. Yeah. Right. Just like they do a lot of stuff on mobile. And this started. This started in like January, like of this year, January 2020. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they like. I I think Pokemon is constantly looking for, and this is a horrible thing to say. They keep looking for the next Pokemon Go. Right. That that's. I they feel like that's what they're trying to do because last year they tried to hype us up with Masters. That's what they closed with right. on their presentation. Um, right. And that was Masters. It would yeah. make sense. They're trying to do a lot of like things yeah. that are free, free to play or free to start. But free to you start. Can put money in like Pokemon Go is that same way too. I think Pokemon Go is the ultimate way where you where you can really play Pokemon Go without paying. Um, yeah. I think yeah. I think those are the healthiest mobile games where you can have a contingency of players that are viable to play for free, and then you've got people like honestly, I'm going to say us because mm-hmm. I do it too, where people will dump money into it because I I mean I've dumped money into it. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I've yeah. done a bit for poke. I, I've done a bit for Masters and yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, so. I, yeah, no, no. I, I definitely. I agree. did it more into Masters. I just, I think Masters is harder to play for free than Go. Well, in a way, but like once you get like the one thing with Masters, at least to start off with, is that mm-hmm. unlike a lot of other mobile games, there's no energy, there's no AP. Yeah, yeah you that's can nice. just that's there true. for like a week on end and just play. Yeah, though right. they are planning on implementing it soon. Yeah, if I remember right. They are but planning like, on implementing it soon. That's what, what I heard. Yeah. So it's like, but so it's not like other ones where you you can literally just farm to continually farm. Yeah, because I know I know you still and play. And they do give you like yeah. the legend events are actually like fairly viable. Yeah. Like I know. Uh, well, the, the the thing about mobile right now, get it's kind of like the new horizon, the the new land discovered where we can go colonize and just earn a lot of money for little effort. And you seen games? I saw the numbers for. Uh, mobile for last year, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes they, they did a billion dollars. Yeah, no, no. Mobile games make a ton of money. Mobile games, ma- mobile games make stupid money. And uh, uh, the one, uh, um, what's it called? The Marvel Strike Force. That one did even more than Star Wars. So it's a market that both Nintendo, Pokemon, everyone oh, yeah. is trying to jump in and trying to figure out. Uh, in, in, uh, Pokemon hit it out of the park with go but normally it doesn't start out that good yeah so um, i can definitely see why they're trying i think they just haven't hit a good concept right. yeah like, or like they've got a good brand but they don't have a good enough concept to go with the brand like right. marvel yeah. and star wars those are brands that you don't even need a good concept for it exactly yeah like they're good enough where well, they are the they are the yeah yeah well exactly. both the, both of those both those brands are also not video games themselves which I think is, the, I think that's the biggest difference because if you put a mobile game for Pokemon on a phone versus a mobile game for like Marvel or Star Wars, there's no gameplay to compare like how much uh, Iron Man can punch somebody in the face, right? But, <laughs> right. But if I'm playing Masters, I go, you know what? I miss having four attacks. Yeah. And I, I miss cool. this mechanic. I miss this mechanic. And it's something like that to compare it to. And so I think that's where the problem is. I think that's where Pokemon Go did great because it, it switched the dynamics of the game instead of being like, hey, let's battle, let's just catch. And right. I thought that was that, that's a really good way to handle it's it. That aspect too, but the thing is a lot of them like a lot of the Pokemon ones, they've started out not the greatest and they've had to do a lot of work just to get mm-hmm. them somewhere tolerable. Like yeah. Pokemon Go is successful enough that they put the time and effort in to make it work. Right. And yeah. now we're here. Yep. Masters, they're trying to put the time and effort in, and it's still like they're still changing fundamental things of, of it. Like, yeah, I'm, that's the only thing I'm worried about that game is that it's just gonna like they're gonna change it too much and it's gonna be bad. Well, it's gonna yeah. like you're gonna lose your customer base, like Pokemon Duel mm-hmm. that got shut down. Yeah, but mm-hmm. like, they, they tried to, they tried to make it work, but guess what? It didn't. It wasn't yeah. good enough. Mm-mm. Yeah, but I'm gonna pivot here just so that we, we yeah, get, yeah we move we're, on, we're getting- but. Uh, but so yeah, the, my, my thought process is you're either going to get like, maybe it's a really stupid DLC two announcement, which probably isn't going to happen next week. Um, I think if we get a DLC two announcement, it's going to be the same day as crown tundra's release. If it happens, that's what I'll say. Yeah. So, I mean, those, those are really your options. I think you either get, either get like Pokemon MOBA slash whatever Tencent is working on. Um, you get, uh, you get a let's go Pikachu two. you get a, um, you get a gen four remake, which I think is stupid, unlikely, <laughs> or you get a, uh, or you get like switch two or something, which I think is stupid, unlikely too. I, 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 I think let's go could happen. I think let's go could happen. Cause I, I could see them definitely not like 
noticing their mistakes. Because um, there is a, the possible poss- possibility of the ORS port because there's. Like, oh yeah, okay. I guess that like honorable mention. <laughs> honorable <laughs> mention. Because like, I don't honorable know, I've mention. never seen that triggered so fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So like he's so like he's right because like okay, so when Pokemon Home came out, we haven't mentioned. We should at least say we we, we talked we about we it. talked about it this week because what so in Pokemon Home this is for background when they data mine Pokemon Home they found a uh, they found names for the video games that can import into Pokemon Home uh, and have Pokedex entries for it and so they found Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire X and Y um, and they all have their like little names for them. Okay. Uh, for their qualifiers, but there was also an extra set of games that was in Pokemon Home's code mm. that were so Ruby and Sapphire are just or Omega or as is labeled Omega, and then Alpha Sapphire is labeled Alpha as like the games they can import. And mm. there's so we also have Sword and Shield, and then we also have an Omega NX and an Alpha NX. And when you dig into that code, it's just a copy of Oraz, and the NX is typically a qualifier for Switch stuff. Because that's the NX with what the uh, they refer to yeah. as a switch as like, yeah in house yeah so like and they still they still use it they still use the code name for stuff as well yeah currently. so that could so, be just something that was left over or that was something they were going to do and yeah. then they went to something else we don't yeah. know we never really we don't know figured it out. could happen it's a weird thing to see happen I just like it's it's very weird and I think it popped, I do believe it popped up again with because it was there before it was before like with when home first came out too yeah it was there no 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 that's that's the only time it ever happened was when home came out that's the only time it popped up okay no. it's not this wasn't hiding in the this wasn't hiding in the DLC or anything okay no, I think it just resurfaced again because of the whole yeah stream okay yeah. I, I I know it came back around for a reason I'm like yeah. I think that's part that makes sense with the stream in there going back to that speaking of Pokemon home uh Pokemon home got an upgrade in preparation uh, for uh, Isle of Armor. Uh, no, not, not really. No, I think it's broken, isn't it? It doesn't actually work. Um, uh, cause... The, well, the, the one main thing that they tried to fix was yes, like not it, effective. It, I don't think it worked. Yeah, it's not working. No, uh, because so, there's other things that go yeah, by. They, so, so they were supposed to make it, uh, they were supposed to take away the ability to make it impossible to fill requests on the GTS go away. However, it didn't because there's still some other impossible requests that are up there <laughs> i think someone's got like a level 10 dragapult like yeah you can still put stupid like that classified mm-hmm. as legends yeah for oh. some reason and so you like, can still request like a level one naganadel or something which is stupid yeah. but they just made it compatible with with isle of armor yeah they tried at least they tried, they tried. i hope i hope they yeah. fix it and there's another update where they fix it but we'll see okay so let's just move on and blow through the rest of this quickly uh, one of the real uh, they just announced to uh, I think the other day it's not Pokemon but it's Smash. Uh, there's on Monday the twenty second there's a a video of Sakurai playing the new character and most likely it's a it's an explanation video so most likely we'll get the character on Monday from Arms. Wonderful. So yeah, yeah that's it. So go ahead and go through this video game news here. Shamu. Yeah. So Island of Armor Pokemon will not be available to use until the next season in July, and then also the Swords of Justice will also be legal then. Uh, you can only do get them through transfer, but they now have an NPC in the battle tower, I believe. They do new update, and they that do. Can rem- that you can remove all of the Pokemon's moves to give them the Galar mark, so they will be able to use it online. So if you have that Volcarona from Gen Five, you can transfer it to Sword and Shield. Go to this NPC; he'll wipe the moves, and it will get a Galar mark, and you can use it in online. That well, is when, yeah. when next season for it's very days, nice. But it's very nice. Yeah, it is nice. So, like all those Pokemon, like Shiny Silver Ally, you can use it online. All those po- like the Pokemon you had from back in the day, you can use them That's online. Amazing. Also, it allows ribbon tra- or uh, ribbon quest. It allows the ribbon quest mm-hmm. to continue for those because you need to. There are ribbons via online battles. If I am well, uh, I don't right. know. I can't. I cannot verify. But I've heard people talk right. about it. I can't. I can't confirm. But if that's a thing, you can now do that because you can wipe their moves, which gives them the Galar mark, which can now be used to get online battles and get the mark, the ribbons if they're there. I, I don't know for sure, but yeah, uh, you can get ribbons for them, so you can continue that quest. It's really nice too for like future games too. Yeah, no, it's really cool. We can talk more about that during the topic though. Um, yeah. So we are going to go ahead, go to Pokemon to go. So tell us more, Jishiro. Tell us more. This is actually really exciting. This is really exciting, actually. Yep. Tickets for Pokemon Go Fest are now live for purchase and their cost of fourteen ninety nine. Now the event will run from July twenty fifth to July twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. Pretty much of when Puckle would have been, Pokemon would have been. 
Um, day one will run from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. with five rotating habitats that shift every hour with 75 total Pokemon, fire, water, grass, battle, friendship. And we have the Global Challenge Arena during that time where players can join in together and beat challenges. Day two will have a set of special researches to complete. And uh, in the lead up to GoFest, there will be a three weeks of timed research. Yeah. This is really cool. Like, GoFest is it's great because everybody can participate this year. So, like, yeah. you can just go on, and if you're available to, like, hang out the 25th to 26th. And you have the money. And you have 15 bucks. You can do it. I mean, that's how much GoFest usually costs. And on top of that, mm -hmm. remember that uh, Niantic said they're going to donate $5 million to uh, Black Lives Matters. Which is amazing. From this revenue. So, like, go. I mean, you're essentially helping a good cause in mm -hmm. the process. It, it, it's going to be really cool. Also, Victini was announced, essentially, to be in it, which will be really cool. Mm -hmm. I, I think the piece that P. McGee actually missed here as well is that during the announcements, um, when we were watching the presentation, po Megas are coming to Pokemon Go in 2020 at some point, which I'd say is cool. <laughs> but like the way they announced it really made a lot of people go, huh? They announced it like it was coming back to the game, but then it was like Pokemon Go at the end. And we were all really yeah. sad. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> we're just every, I think the entire reaction was just confusion as to why Megas are everywhere but the game. <laughs> right because yeah. they're, they're in masters they're in pokemon mystery dungeon dx they're, yeah. they're now they're gonna be in pokemon go and but you can't have them in sword and shield maybe they'll fix it one day i'm not holding my breath though <laughs> once we get the tcg maybe <laughs> oh my they so the last time megas were in the tcg was i think the last set for gx tag team because there's a mega sableye tag team with yeah. the, i think tyranitar yeah yeah uh finally um Zekrom's in rates until uh, early July, which is cool. So I can go get Zekrom. Yeah. Uh, in Puckle News, there's a couple things. One, draft league signups are going up until the end of the week. So you can go do that. Um, please go do that if you want to join into a draft league. And also keep an eye out for more news on the summer's league, Summer League. Oh, Shamu will figure it out for me. And We're working on it. <laughs> yep. We're, on it. <laughs> We're waiting for Isle of Armor to come out, and now we found out. Now it came it. out. Yeah. Yeah, no timer changes, which is unfortunate. It'll yep. be battle spot like 90-90%. Yep, so with that, this has been probably the longest news segment I've ever recorded. Oh, uh, yeah, it's quite yep. long. And so <laughs> we are going to go ahead and kick it on over to Puckle's Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Today, Jushiro and Shamu are going to be answering five Pokemon-themed trivia questions from our Discord and our Discord only. No other place did these questions come from. They came from nowhere else. If you put them somewhere else, they're not here. I put them so, through in the incinerator and they're gone. Yes, and they're gone. They're gone forever. I'm just, just as a heads up, maybe don't submit your trivia question in the iTunes reviews. Don't. Just don't. I appreciate the iTunes review, I guess, but like, if you want your trivia question read, not the place to do it. But there are five trivia theme or Pokemon themed trivia questions that they answer as a team. They can get one point per question if they get it correct, except for that one time that the question's worth two or three, depending on how badly they're doing. <laughs> There's a uh, hint that they can use as a lifeline for one of the questions. However, if they get all the questions correct without using the hint, they can cash in for an extra point for a possible maximum total of seven points today. They are racing against their fellow co-hosts in a race to 30 points. Whoever gets there gets a 15 or $20 credit to PokemonCenter.com. I was about to outrage some people because they're like, I can't even get a plush with that <laughs> at PokemonCenter.com. And you, the listener, if your question is read on the show, get a chance at a $20 credit to AnimeGravy.com, your one-stop shop for all of your anime goodness needs. I only do it for the privilege to lord over my co-hosts. I think that's what 60% of you do. I'm going to be completely honest. On a trivia show, I've never won. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's pretty close. Let's get into it. Our first question this week is going to be from Backslash, and he wants to know, what is the only water-type Pokemon line that can learn Teeter Dance? Water-type Pokemon that can learn Teeter Dance? That would be Ludicolo, I believe. I don't have another answer. That sounds like what it is. Is that your final answer? Are you going to lock it in? Yeah, I'm going to lock it in. Yeah, I just can't think of anything else. That is correct. 
Oof. Ludicolo line can learn teeter dance. So you guys are one for one. I did second guess myself with like Polytoad at the very end. I'm like, no, it's no, no. I'm like, yeah, it's like it's definitely Ludicolo. All right. Our next question is going to be from Enharmonia on the Discord server. What is the only type to not have a damaging move that can also lower an opponent's stat? I oh, will give wow. you an example of this. Uh, something like Psychic can lower special defense. Uh, 10%, oh, so stuff and like there's that. a whole type dedicated to do. just this. No, no, there's a type that doesn't have a move like Psychic. Yeah, it can't do damage and lower a stat, or have a possibility yes. of lowering a stat. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Wow. There's Dragon. Couple. Dragon has um breaking swipe. Okay. Lowers attack. Rock okay. has speed. Dark has special attack. Poison has acid, which is defense, I believe. Um yeah. and acid spray. Uh normal has something I thought. Maybe not. Mm. Pass that for now. Flying yeah. has I don't flying a normal, I don't know for sure. Hmm, okay. Water has muddy water, can lower accuracy. Right. Grass. Ice has icy wind. Icy wind lowers speed. Psychic Mm -hmm. we know already. Mm -hmm. Ghost can lower special defense. Right. Fairy can lower special attack. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So far, uh, electric. Electric has electroweb that lowers speed. Bug has struggle a bug. Yep. So far, normal and flying, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, Normal flying, flying. I can't feel. I mean, they have attacks that lower themselves stats, like Brave yeah. Bird. Uh, but I don't recall that they having an attack. Hurricane doesn't do anything else but damage, right? It confuses. Um, but oh it, yeah, which it just doesn't, doesn't lower any stats. Lower a stat, right? Um, Sky Tech can do that. Um, Arrow Blast is a crit. No. Uh, Fire has it burns, but I don't know if it lowers an attack. Oh, this is actually a rough one. Yeah, I'm going to need an answer. I'm just kind of going to say, I'm thinking flying. I think it's um, wrong, but I, I don't... Yeah, I'm not sure it's just flying, but it's the only thing that I can't really ping a move that lowers since fly with flying. Yeah, because I feel normal has something, but like fly, I'm going to say flying. Probably wrong. The answer is flying. So you guys are correct. <laughs> it is <laughs> flying. Fire lash, actually. Fire lash. Oh, yeah, defense. Yep. I'm not sure about normal, but I'm pretty sure there's something. I think there is. I just can't think of what it would. I guarantee you it exists. Probably some normal type move that if you hit somebody, it lowers something. I don't want to look it up now. (laughs) Our next one is going to be a Pokedex entry, as always. And this one is going to be from Toad. And he says, it's Pokemon Crystal Dex entry reads, rather than making a nest in one specific spot, it wanders in search of food after darkness falls. Who's that Pokemon? Okay, so it's Gen 1, Gen 2. It's Pokemon that comes out at night. So I'm thinking it might be Noctowl. Because I don't think Hoot Hoot can hunt. What was the what was the deck entry again? Yeah, could you repeat it? Rather than making a nest in one specific spot, it wanders in search of food after darkness falls. Mm. No nest, wanders for food after dark. So it's a nighttime Pokemon that wanders wanders for food. Wanders is not flying either. I, want, so I was could... thinking Sne- uh, Sneasel would make. I think Sneasel would be more something to talk about hunting and packs or like being vicious or something right like exactly much more of a nature thing not like what it does yeah it's such um, a generic pokedex entry it, it is a very generic one wow um, so let's what generic pokemon do we have here uh, well, we have his night and then it might it hunts for food um, it hunts for food so literally half the pokedex <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, wanders around night in search of food. Could be a ghost type. Remember, it's only Gens one and two. This Pokemon is a uh, is a obvious. It only comes out at night, obviously. In Gens one and two, or Gen two, I should say, because um, there's only a nighttime thing. Odd- oddish. Odd- I think it's oddish. I don't know why. Suddenly, I think it's oddish because I remember something about it wandering around at night. But I could be wrong. Honestly, I don't even care. Because okay it, it. It, it lies <laughs> on the ground. It lies on the ground during the day, and then at night it pops up to wonder to hunt for prey. That, I, I, I have that. I don't I'm know willing why. to say Oddish. Oddish is unfortunately <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what could it be? <laughs> the answer the answer is Ariados. God! Mm. Oh! I hate that I thought of Ariados. I would have taken Spinarak as well. I, I hate that I thought of Ariados with Noctowl, and I just thought, no, Ariados yeah, would be You were so different. close with Noctowl. You were so close. God! I was like, just Ariados. I literally thought Ariados and... Oh, mm. Salt. 
Let me get some salt. Our next question is going to be from Golmain Banky. This has three answers, so you can get one point for each question or for each answer. What three Pokemon lines have a times four weakness to poison type attacks? What four lines? Okay. Three lines. Three lines. Shinotic is one. That's correct. Shinotic and Whimsicon? Whimsicon is another. That's two. So it has to be. So what's weak to poison? Grass? Is, is it only grass and fairy that's weak to poison? Apparently, yeah. Offensively, they before the whole f- uh, fairy thing, they weren't that big. Uh, uh, what's also the grass and fairy type? Um, um, shoot. I'm surprised you don't know this one. I'm upset that I don't know this one either. You haven't seen it in a while, but it went like we saw it. We used to use it back like at the end of 2019. Oh, okay. It's a before swish. Wait, no what? I'm like losing my mind because I don't know what this is. This is bug. This is bugging me. It's, you're you're gonna hate yourself if you give me the answer. If you make me give you the I answer, I don't want you to. Because oh, I'm gonna hate myself too. Here it is. I know I will. You are gonna hate I yourself. Know. Oh, Tom Bulu. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that is correct. There we go. All right, that is three points. You guys are at. Uh, you guys are five for ah. four right now. Uh, so our your last question is always is a base stat question, and this one is gonna come from Polywo. We're gonna pick that one. What middle evolution? Ha- Actually, let's no. Let's get rid of that one. <laughs> Egotistical elect kid. What fairy type Pokemon has the highest base HP stat? Fairy type HP stat. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's Wigglytuff, mm-hmm. tough, but we can't we can't cash in our hint for an extra point anyways because we got a question wrong. Yeah, so you can use it. You can what, use it. What is it? Or give us a hint. It's a normal. It's fairy a Wiggly type. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggly, Wiggly tough is correct. <laughs> it is correct. It's crazy high. It's stupid high. Uh, but yes, that gives you guys six points today. So crushed it, crushed it there. Um, let me go ahead and add those points in. That changes up the leaderboard quite drastically because everybody's running pretty close together, with except for basket. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna sort columns Z to A. In first place, we have a two-way tie between P. McGee and Whimsicott with sixteen points. In third place, standing all by himself is Yushiro with twelve points. In fourth place, we have a three-way tie. Between R Sigma, Dr. Shamu, and Sublime. In seventh place, we have a two way tie between Seth Bilo and Scrawn. And in ninth, we have Linian with five. And bringing up the rear is Basket, who has yet to get on the board. That is it for this week's po- Puckles Pokey Quiz. We are going to. Before we leave, leave Green Entry Oddish. Yes. During the day, it keeps his face buried in the ground. At night, it wanders around, sowing its seeds. I just needed to defend myself. Okay, 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 okay. I'm... <laughs> okay, wow, I believe you. Triggered over Oddish. I didn't think that would happen. I didn't, wow. I didn't think okay. anyone other than Claude might be triggered over an Oddish. I, 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 yeah, I didn't right? think that would happen. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Come on. <laughs> It's fun. Like topic. <laughs> so that is uh that is it. We are gonna take a short break and we'll be right back at you with the topic. This week we have another iTunes review from Matthew Smith. Five stars. This is the greatest podcast of all time. I started listening at episode 31, and this is the best podcast I've ever listened to. Well, thank you, Matthew Smith, and I appreciate it. We are going to kick it on over to the topic now. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is Isle of Armor DLC, because we already talked about the presentation. At least we got that out of our systems. Okay. Isle of Armor DLC, it came out this week. It's obviously like the big hot topic. I'm very, very happy with this. Like, I'm just going to say that right out of the gate. People will remember, like, back in November, I gave that review of of Swish, and I'm just like, meh. I still feel kind of meh. But Isle of Armor, 100% yes. That's awesome. Well, maybe not 100%. I'll say 90, like 8%. Because there's like a little <laughs> bit, there's like, I have, I have one, I have one minor complaint. And the whole oh, thing could have been avoided with yeah. the same product. Yeah, I, I know what, problem, what issue you have. Let me get the complaint out of the way so that we can talk about how awesome it is. And, and kind of just gush. My minor complaint is they advertised that apricorn balls are coming back. Uh-oh. They they advertise like this is part of the thing. Like if you go on the right. pre- on like the Pokemon dot com website to get like the press release for Sword and Shield, it's got like a little I box remember. that says Apricorn Balls coming back in Isle of Armor. Mm-hmm. So it's technically not a lie. Technically, technically not a lie. Apricorns you can collect Apricorns in the Isle of Armor. 
they gave us uh, curve balls back, but they also gave us extra balls back. They too. did. We okay. Be, to be fair, we do get sport ball and safari ball now, which is kind of cool. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, nice. Oh, no, n- 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 okay. <laughs> so if I want. I love the safari ball. Yeah, I'm gonna break your heart here real soon here. Oh, okay. You can get apricorn balls, but the way you get apricorn balls um, is you collect apricorns. Mm-hmm. That, that sounds reasonable, right? However, there isn't a, there there isn't a character to give these apricorns to. To turn them okay. into Pokeballs. We saw the advertisement a couple weeks ago for the Cramomatic, which was a thing that you can put four items into and it spits out a new item. You go, oh, okay, well, four Apricorns to get one ball. That can't be that bad, right? At least I can get like right. a heavy ball and everything. Turns out, if you put Apricorns in, it's just kind of random what Pokeball you get. I have yet to get a Kurt Ball and I've put about 150 Apricorns in. I haven't gotten a Kurt Ball or a Special Ball. I've gotten Pokeballs. I've gotten Ultra Balls. I've I think Pokeball balls. is the worst insult. It's like putting Poke thing in and you just get a Pokeball. And I'm just like, it's like the ball guy thing. Like, oh, what am I going to get? Oh, you're doing like the... Uh, oh, shit. They yeah. gotcha. They're gotcha in the Pokeballs. It makes no sense. It's absolutely stupid. What's really cool <sighs> about the Cramomatic as well is everything else has recipes. You can get evolution items hands down without like without rolling dice does some of them are kind of like one of them are calls for an eject pack i think yeah okay you're not gonna put an eject pack in for an item sorry though i think rocky helmet with like everstone or hearthstone which is great it's four everstones i think give which you is, a like, rocky it's helmet, actually really yeah. good and they have a yeah which is nice yeah, yeah. there's like ability capsule is a chain there's of good stuff if you have a bunch of stardust you can make a ability yeah. capsule because stardust with mm-hmm. all the money items combining four of the lower one goes into the next tier up so like stardust four yeah. stardust is a star piece for a star piece is a the um comet shard for a comet shard is a rare candy for a mm-hmm. candy is an ability capsule it's a whole chain oh, wow and then like four bottle caps gold bottle cap they did stuff like that and like uh four rare bones what did that they did something i can't remember what it did i did that i don't remember what it was oh wishing it was a uh, it was a wishing piece that's what it was. The thing we just have to remember is that the Cramomatic's amazing outside yeah, of purple. Yeah, it's a very easy way to. It's absolute get garbage. Some other stuff. It, it's just that's my two percent complaint about Isle of Armor, is that they just absolutely ruined Kurt Balls, and I'm very mad. I might as well just go play the Elite Four. <laughs> um, I think I'd have the same chance yeah. of being a Kurt Ball. It's kind of rough. Do we know? Do they do they give us mints? Do we know? What do you Can mean? Can the Cramomatic give us mints? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if the Cramomatic mm. gives you mints or not. I I really wish I had just like a lot of a lot of things, which I don't anymore. I'm gonna insert right here before like YouTube comments or like an email comes in. We are recording on Friday. If something cool happens over the weekend and we get things like solidified, or they release something that was locked behind a, a, a code, they fix something with a patch or something. <laughs> But other than that, I Shamu and I both played it. I know you haven't played it yet, Shishiro. We're no, just going to play it. Please. And I like doing this. Oh, this is going to be one of my favorite things I've ever... I am so happy with this DLC. This DLC did a lot of really cool things. The story isn't, like, great, but it was exactly what I expected. You have, like, three little island trials that you get to go do. I don't want to spoil anything. There's, like, three little trials you have to do. All of them are kind of cute. They're little, like... It, it reminded me a lot of the island trials from Sun and Moon. I mean, it was kind of like that. Uh, they they don't really call oh, them island not. trials. I, I think yeah. they just call them trials or something. But that's essentially what they were. And it's very cool. It's very nice. Because that's exactly the kind of stuff we were missing in, in mm. Sword and Shield, in my opinion. I was very happy to have that back. That was very cool. The Kung Fu thing was pretty straightforward. <laughs> it is surprisingly late, too, by the way. Yeah. Essentially, you do this thing to unlock the Kung Fu. To unlock Kung Fu, yeah. It has the uh, coolest Dynamax battle oh, stadium. Yeah. Oh, nice. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to just, like, being stuck in, like, these these areas that are very, um, what's the word? Very, like, peopleized. Like, you can tell, like, somebody built this, and this, you're, like, in a canyon. And oh, it's really cool. nice. Yeah, it's just really cool to be outside and doing Oh, that, that sounds know? awesome. It is a very cool arena. And if I would have giant monsters that, or monsters that can become giant, battling at the Grand Canyon would be top of my list right there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm a fan of it. I, I think Urshifu is also just, like, fun. I was just going to ask, uh, Kafu uh, and its evolu- uh, or transformation, what do you think about them? So I haven't used them in competitive. I hear they're doing very oh, well in competitive, good. and they're being allowed in VGC next oh, wow. month in July because they're just legendaries. They're not considered mythicals okay. or anything. And they're letting a lot of other legendaries in, like Terrakian yeah. and okay. stuff like that. Uh, are coming back as well. They were tailor made for VGC because mm. I think their Gigantamaxes can break through Protect. Dynamax and Gigantamax can break through Protect. Yes, that's why you have to have Max Guard. I think they can break through Max Guard. Oh wow, Gigantamax. 
Oh, oh, Urshifu, Urshifu can. Urshifu, that's what I mean. That's yeah, what I mean. Urshifu, Urshifu can do can. it any, like to anything. Yes, Urshifu's moves go through protect and like all those protecting moves. I heard they were tearing up. Both forms were tearing up OU right now as well. I think they're both viable in their own aspect. I think water is just better overall because fairy just. Dist- I heard I heard dark was being used more than water currently. That's just from Seth. Though. I can see it just for hitting hard with dark, but it's just the fairy thing. Like that's my only. Well, then again, fairy might not be that prevalent right now. I don't know. Um, I think it's mostly that there's so many so many things that resist water right now because of uh. The, oh the, the fish. yeah, that's true too. We just had everyone been paranoid about fish, and then now it's just like <laughs> oh, here's this other thing. That's like, oh, we have we already have answers to this type of thing. Okay, this isn't that bad. So that's probably what it is. I think that's probably yeah. why. It feels good to use. He's got a cool move pool, like a really deep and like colorful move pool. So that's really nice. He, he feels good to use. That's how I would put it. You know how like when you feel like when you yeah. use your starter, like you've been training up your other Pokemon in the back and then you get to use your starter and yeah. it just feels good. I know the feeling. That, that's how Urshifu feels. Okay. That's how, that's that's how I describe it. It just feels good to use Urshifu. But I went with the water one. Did you go with you went yeah, with the water, water one? Shamu? I thought it was better overall. That's what I did. Yeah. I was like, I think this. I, I like it better for like raid battles. Uh, I think that's about what I've used it for so far is just raid battles. I haven't battles. used mine yet too. I need to fix mine and like do uh, EVs and nature and all that stuff. EV, mint it and everything. Yeah, it was good though. I was pretty happy with it. Thing that I think I was happiest with. So one, they had, uh, we get like a whole new area. I think they say it's technically half the size of the wild area. It does it not doesn't feel, feel that, that way. way, but it definitely it's it is not like a full wild. It probably is. It's not like the wild area where it's flat and just kind of like mm-hmm. it's not just a big expanse. Like each area is its own thing and it's like packed. It's they they crammed a lot of stuff. Like yeah. the wetland. You've got it's tunnels, heavy on you've details. Got logs, you've got trees. You've got oh yes. They crammed it with a bunch of just like aesthetic. They have caves. That are not called Galar Mine Number One <laughs> and then Galar Mine Number Two. They have caves like Brawler's Cave and Warm Up Tunnel. Like both those names are all instantly better than being named after the region they're in. <laughs> Loop Lagoon is a good name. Loop uh, Lagoon, that's awesome. yep. and then everyone loves Honeycomb Island. Honeycomb Island, yeah. I it's mean, calm, they're, they're not good. Comb. Honeycomb. Honeycomb. No, it's not. Honeycomb Island. Um, I must back you. Honeycomb. It's calm. Yeah. No, it's, it's calm. Honeycomb. Like the nature calm. Oh, call. Oh, honey calm. calm okay, honey calm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's called honey calm. Yes. Don't don't make me. So when they announced like Swish and they're just like we made sure we went through all the Pokemon and chose Pokemon that were fit- fitting for the region. I don't know if I believe that for Swish, but I believe that for Isle. Oh, of Armor. very much. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that for Isle of Armor because Isle of Armor, I think they chose like the right Pokemon for the location. I think they also chose the right Pokemon to add to the 400 spice we had in up, Swish. Do you think it spices up the meta realm? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we had we have a lot of meta staples returning. I think the biggest one that I can think of off the top of my head is Scissors back. Volcarona. Oh, and Volcarona. Like, and Volcarona. For me, and Volcarona I got back. my Bug Boys back. Like, you got Pinter, Heracross, <laughs> Volcarona, Caesar. Like, oh, that's so nice. But yeah, those are the Skarmory, which would have been good if Corviknight didn't kind of replace it, kind of like as a substitute. Mm. I think Skarmory's probably still better than Corviknight. Okay, they have their own variations of what they do. Like, Skarm, yeah. I think, does more phasing way better, but Corviknight just is a, it does more of a physical tank damage. Like, it does more of a, it does more damage than Skarmory. I would agree with that. I still think there's a role for both of them to play. 100%. It's just, I don't know it, if Skarmory is as good or not. To be honest, I can't say for sure. I feel like Corviknight fell short of what Skarmory used to do because Corviknight isn't Skarmory. Corviknight does Corviknight things. It, oh, it does. Yeah, they do different things. I mean, I welcome Skarmory back. <laughs> <laughs> I welcome it back. I mean, like Kingdra's back. I mean, you got you got a lot of old staples. Kingdra's good. I too. did look at it, and it was very like it's very front generation okay. loaded. It is. There are a lot of like things from the Safari Zone. Kangaskhan is back. Mm-hmm. Tauros is back. You've got Pinsir, yes. Slicer. Okay. Um, it's very front loaded. I looked at the spread because I actually sat down and counted because, like, my, my curiosity was with how many Pokemon came back. And I think depending on how many you count, like, who you count, like, if you count Slowpoke as coming back or if you count uh, Slowking or you don't count Slowking, I don't know why you wouldn't count Slowking because you can't get Slowking. He's not in the Isle of Armor decks, but he's okay. still in the game. Also, getting Slowbro. Getting Slowbro is great. Yeah, Slowbro is cool. I think they all together came back with, like, 102, and I think 102 is if you... Add in, add in Slowpoke. I think that's what they did. So, like, they just yeah. pushed it over, and they're just like, we'll give them 101 <laughs> or 102 yeah. with Magirna. I'll, I'll list a couple other mods that are, like, here. Because you got the Slowbro line. Ooh, you've Chansey's got Chansey back. Now. That's awesome. I love Chansey. 
let's see what else. There's Town Flame, which is eh, but it might be something fun. Yeah, it's not as good as it used to be. Klefki, yeah, like, I feel like they're just like, hey, remember Genesis <laughs> XOU? Here you go. Yeah, there's Klefki. We've got Alakazam. Oh, yeah, Alakazam's nice. back. Uh, Tentacruel, which might be in some situations. Uh, we have Gigantamax, right. Venusaur, and Blastoise yeah, that come meh. here. There's Scolipede. Scolipede, Scolipede is, is back. Amoongus is great. Amoongus We've is got back. Tangela Tangros. Okay. We've got them back. Zoroark is a notable uh, option now. Magnezone. Well, Magnezone's not as good in OU anymore because he doesn't have HP. No, ice. but it's still a good mod. It's it's still got enough. He does have body press. Yeah, though, so that's something. So it's it's not as great as uh. You have to have a certain stuff with body press to be as good. I'm happy with Mill Tank. That's one thing I'm like I'm happy with. I'm happy with most of it. I don't want to go through the list, but I- I'm picking things. You're going through the whole list. It sounds like. <laughs> Any additional legendaries that they're adding other than the trio birds? Wait, in Crown Tundra? No, in the uh, Isle of Arms. Uh, so the three birds come back in Crown Tundra. They don't come back oh, in Isle of Arms. Oh, okay. Oh, we also got Porygon. Uh, we did get Porygon. That's true. Uh, so the three birds, yeah, that's Crown Tundra. Like, all the legendaries are in Crown Tundra. So no, Crown Tundra, gotcha. like, I'm very excited about this Pokedex. I don't know that I can say the same for the Crown Tundra Pokedex. Because I feel like a lot of this is going to be legendary. Or they're going to have a, a route, and then they're yeah. like... Unless they're gonna, I, I really hope what they do is do at least, at least like 75 normal mons at the very least, and then just like shove legends in. I'm hoping that they're focusing more of their time on Crown Tundra, which from the trailer that they gave us, um, before Isle of Armor came out, I would, I would agree with that. That's possibly what's going on. They're spending more time on Crown Tundra. I think they kind of have to too with the mechanics and such. I, I think Crown Tundra could definitely see way more just because like there's new gameplay, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I could see them in their 100 plus returning. They don't include the legends. I could see that possibly being the case. I'm not going to say it is the case because right now, I think with the number of Pokemon that they've shown are coming back in Crown Tundra, I think we're at 68, which if they're going to do exactly like 100 or 101 again, like they did with this, I would say, okay. (laughs) Of those 68, two of them are the Aurorus line. And so Uh I'm thinking to myself, uh uh-oh, Aurorus line's here. Probably going to do, like, the rest of the fossils here yeah. because it's a whole expedition thing. All right. So I'm like, I'm like, so there's 11 more fossils. It's like a dinosaur island thing. Yeah, it's 11 more fossils. So that's 79. So we get 21 more. Okay. The, I think notable missing Pokemon at this point, outside of the rest of the starters that aren't Gen 7, Gen 1, and Gen 8, I'd say outside of those right now are, like, Dragonite. Dragonite's still going to be missing. Hmm. I don't know. There's still some Pokemon. Like my, I'm only saying this to make myself feel better because I really hope for DLC pack two because one, this was. Very I'm fun. sure it will. Yes. And two, I want to just see the decks finished in Swish. I want the story of Swish to be it changed Thatch's opinion in a complete 180 over the period of a year and a half. Yeah, that's what I want. Do you want Swish to be the Final Fantasy 14 tale? So after this, like this this week, I've like definitely had like I've been revisiting like a lot of the decks at controversy to see what. The interviews have said and stuff like that, just to kind of get a feeling for things. And somebody put up a very good, um, put up a very good timeline of events for what happened in Swish's development that have been t- hinted at through various interviews. And they found that, like at the beginning, they were trying to make the ultimate Pokemon game. Mm. It sounds like at some point they were trying to put too much in because they were trying to match Breath of the Wild expectations with oh, Pokemon Sword snap. and Shield. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's a monumental feat. The second of all. Breath of the Wild had, like, a six-year development time. Something like that, yeah. You had a... What was it for Swish? It was a uh, a three-year development time, so you have half the time to develop it. And they're trying to make this ultimate Pokemon game, and then they just ran out of time. Probably why we got the models cut and stuff like that. Looking at that, I'm just like, okay, that's much more understandable. Uh, I've just been looking at it, and I'm like, but you can still have that ultimate Pokemon game with the DLC. Exactly. We've been talking about, like, how wonderful Isle of Armor is, like, setting-wise and stuff like that. Uh, Shamu will agree with me on this. It also makes it like a wonderful hub for Sword and Shield, like your post-game adventures. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Everything you need is pretty much on yeah. here. Oh, nice. You can upgrade the dojo, which will then let you get, like, PP-ups and such. Not PP-ups, sorry. Um, Vitamins, yeah. Proteins, irons. Super cheap. I think you can get them for like oh, 5k oh. a piece. Oh, that's half a price. You get them half off. You get them half off. It, no, that is half. No, that it's is half. half. Yeah, that's half. Yeah. yeah. No, it's half. You get twenty five for one twenty five yeah. thousand or just twenty five thousand. So another thing too, you got the tutor. You you have a wardrobe there that you can just access and a stylus when you upgrade a it. Po- a PC that you don't really need, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> 
you have things that reset your stats, like with armor. Right? Yeah. The, there, there's there's a lot of functions here that are a couple things you probably would need to go other elsewhere. I think get. breeding is the only thing I'm upset is not there. Breeding would. I'm okay with breeding not being here. I think it would just be a wasted area. Yeah, you're probably not wrong. Because then, okay, so if they had breeding here, then let's just say you wouldn't, like, well, the desert's actually, like, the worst part. But, like, we'll say, uh, <laughs> Loop Lagoon is gone, and you get breeding. Loop yeah. Lagoon's really cool, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you added breeding, you would just lose an area, because they would have to make an area somewhat suited for that type of mechanic. I would say you could probably put it in the swamp, like a little thing in the swamp. Possibly. I would say But that. it's just the issue of, like, you'd have to add something else there, and then you'd have three breeders, and then you'd have to, like... Three breeders would be a lot. And then if you're saying, and now if you think, oh, it's a DLC, they need to have one, then Crown Hunter's gonna have one, you're gonna have four. Ooh, okay, okay, you're making good points now. Okay, I, I concede. <laughs> I concede. But the one thing, in my personal opinion, is not great about the hub area is raids. The raids, That's the, like, the raid spawns and the dens are not great, because a lot of them you can't even see easily, mm. and they're... Some of them are, like, in caves and stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's not the greatest, too, because you will, like, trying to get somewhere, you might get lost by accident. I find myself, like, I try not to scan the raids, I'll just try to go around the area, and then I'll find stuff. It's always, like, raids are, like, I wouldn't say they're my secondary goal, they're, like, my one and a half goal. Yeah. And my other goal is just to, like, look around and enjoy the scenery while I can, while it's still new and it feels good. Yeah. It's very cool. The The one thing we didn't talk about, and this is probably, like, the coolest thing to end on in general, is uh, when you boot up Jishiro, you're going to see this giant Waylord just mm. out in the ocean. It's Oof. not a set piece. Oh, yeah. <gasps> you can go? You can go battle it. Oh, But mine amazing. hasn't respawned yet, and I hope it respawns. Nope, it doesn't. Nope, I don't think it does. It might be, like, the special Pokemon. You know how you can get, like, Tangrowth and Scizor and stuff in that spot, in, like, certain spots? Yeah. Depending on the day and the weather? I heard it might be like that, but nobody knows yet. No, it's an interactable. No, I'm so sad. It needs to come back. I don't even want it to, like, battle it. I want it to come back just as, like, yeah, the showpiece. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm fairly sure it's just, like, a one-time thing. I hope no. it's not. Which is really sad. I I battled it. I, I murdered mine, yeah. You murdered it. <laughs> it's really cool because it's, it's level 80. It's really oh, cool. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah. It's the highest level Pokemon you can actually fight in Sword and Shield. It's really cool, though. Like, it, it just looks really cool because everybody keeps making jokes about how Waylord never looks its right size. And, like, this time it's, like, full-scale Waylord. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's very cool. Oh, another thing, though, I guess, with that, like, full, like with Pokemon being, like, the sizes, is that uh, once you beat the uh, oh, initial yeah. thing, not the cup through arc, but the initial part, Pokemon will follow you in the Isle of Armor. But only in the Isle of Armor. Draco Vish of the Terror. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing. Wulu rolls. <gasps> oh, I was so happy. That was, oh, that's awesome. I was so happy for that. Now, like, now I have to train a level 100 Wulu so I can actually run around with it in the lead and not, like, <laughs> fight automatically. It wasn't as well oiled as, like, the Let's Go Pikachu follow mechanic, which of I thought course. was... Yeah, because you can, you can lose track. Well, yeah, you can lose like, track of them, and I, I wish you could just, like, select which one in your party instead of putting them at front. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly so that you can have him follow, because I think the entrance animation when the Pokemon, like, comes out to battle a wild one is longer when they're following you than if you were just to throw it the Pokeball. It might be, but it's so much cooler. It is cooler. I agree <laughs> with you. It's kind of like point and they go out. It's like they don't, you don't throw anything. They just like, awesome. go, you're already in the lead. I'd rate Sword and Shield like a 7 out of 10. I'd rate Isle of Armor like a 9.5 out of 10. As soon as we finish this podcast, yeah. I'm turning on my Switch and playing Isle of Armor. Yeah, you better. It, it's definitely worthwhile. I would recommend to anybody I Love Armor. Like, if you're questioning, like, if you if you were met about Swish, this, like, reinvigorated me entirely. I think it also just feels good that we get a lot of, like, old favorites back as well. If they would have done Crown Tundra first, we wouldn't have gotten that. Make sure you get all 150 Diglets. Yeah, get all the Diglets. You, you have to do that. You don't have to, but... <laughs> yeah, shh, 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 shh. The last reward isn't that exciting. It, it's totally exciting. It's not, but <laughs> what do you okay. mean? Uh, that's okay. If you haven't done it, you should do it. It's totally worth uh, it. I will. On that note, we are gonna take a short break, and we're gonna hit you back up with the Pokemon of the episode. We'll catch you on the flip flop. <laughs> And welcome to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex 812, Rillaboom, the drummer Pokemon. 
from the Shield Pokédex entry, the one with the best drumming techniques becomes the boss of the troop. It has a gentle disposition and values harmony among its group. All right. So Rillaboom is not a bad Pokemon. He just got Grassy Surge, which is kind of cool. Um, it's better than Overgrow. Oh, yeah. Even I know that. <laughs> it, it honestly just got better with uh, DLC 2 to move 2 with yeah. Grassy Glide. Grassy Glide, yeah, right? Because uh, gra- Grassy Glide was physical, right? Did they make it physical? It is physical, yeah. Boom. It's physical, 70 base power. Boom. It, it's, I don't know. If, uh, you might not run it on it, but it's a very good move to have now that Grassy Surge really is out. Like, yeah. It would, it, 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 it's a, it makes good use of it just because Reliboom is the... Uh, it has the highest attack, actually, of all starters. Yeah, it does. Base 125. Uh, base 100 HP too, so he's he's not bad, and base 85 no. speed, so he's faster than every Alolan starter, so it it works out. <laughs> wow. Um, base 90 defense on top of that, so like he he's taking a hit or two, like he's he's not going down to anything physical, special maybe, but not physical. Um, so this week we had a team from a listener from Coil Builder. They sent it in with their email in hopes that it got here, and because we did not prep a team beforehand, we're gonna use it. Uh. <laughs> I believe this team is for VGC. I hope it's for VGC. If not, you should make a lot of changes. Um, so <laughs> I'm, we're going to jump right into it. Our first Pokemon is for is Rillaboom itself with Grassy Surge, holding a Life Orb with Knock Off, Wood Hammer, High Horsepower, and Protect. Um, I don't know the strategy behind this team other than it, this is probably going to set Grassy Terrain with Drift Blim holding Grassy Seeds. Gra- what does Grassy Seeds do? Does that one boost your defense? Is that what it is? I- well, special defense or defense? It's it's defense it's then, drift- because special defense is uh, well, defense is electric drift- seed, and then special defense is a psychic seed, and misty seed. Misty seed Maybe? is special defense, I think, and so this must be this must be physical defense. Rule of elimination, or process yep. of elimination. Yes, uh, I know what two of them do for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Driftblit, so but this is Driftblin with uh, Tailwind Strength Up. I didn't know Driftblin got Strength Up. Yeah, strength. That's kind of cool. Um, it got spread out a bit this gen, I, b- I believe. It's yeah, that's cool. Kind of fun. Yeah, I'm into that. Shadow Ball and Ally Switch, so people you can keep people guessing. I still think it's better on Dusclops, but that's just me. It's, well, I think the whole thing that you do the unburdened thing, so you go first, so you can. Yeah, yeah. So you go, off, so you go but... speedy, and then you can do whatever you want, and yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely, I, I agree with that. Um, I, I think that's the deal. I just don't know how effective that is. Um, I mean, you can use Strength Step, which will help hit other physical threats, but not everything's physical, um, as yeah. even on this team will present later on. But I think they're also using a couple different strategies. It's like it, it's like it's two sets of two Pokemon that work very well together, and then I think this, these Pokemon are good, so I put them here. It kind of comes across that Yeah, way. take the next two, Shamu, and then we'll talk about that. Next, we have a Dragapult with Clear Body and a Sash with Dragon Darts, Light Screen, Reflect, and Surf. I've never seen screens work very well on Dragapult in, it, in VGC. It's an option. It's I an option. Don't. I'd much rather have it on a support mod than Dragapult. Though, this is meant to uh, work with, I assume, this Colossal with Steam yes. Engine weakness policy. Yes, it is. And then is. Iron Head, High Horsepower, Rock Slide, Flare Blitz. Like, I feel yes. that was like another core. Yeah, I think those two are supposed to work together in that way. I, I so if I'm understanding, I think what happened is, uh, or what's happening is that he got like the really boom drift blim lead and then dragapult colossal lead. Yeah, I just think that's too many. And then things. everything else is, and then the other yeah, two support. options are <laughs> just kind of like you throw these on to yeah. like do stuff. I mean, I can I can see the Dracovish being scary with the drift blim with tailwind. Yeah, but I I don't know like the, it, like the dragapult I think would be better if it was running something like phantom force so you can like burn dynamax turns. Um, you know. Jishiro, you want to take the last two real quick, though? Yeah, take yes, the last of two, course. Jishiro. Tell us more. Speaking of Dracovich, we have that bad boy with Crunch, vi- uh, Fishes Rend, uh, Ice Fan, Psychic Fans, uh, Strong Jaw, it's the ability with the Choice Scarf on Oh, patched. never mind. It's got the Choice Scarf. I don't know if you need Tailwind. Well, I think it's to outspeed other things. Like You'd have to, like, scarfers, yeah, what are you trying to outspeed? Like, like Dragapult? Other <laughs> uh, Choice Scarfers. I, I guess. Maybe even Dragapult. Yeah. I don't know. It's, Koi Scarf hasn't actually been that common, uh, I've noticed, in VGC this year. Yeah. Um, that's just me, though. But yeah, take us home, Jushiro. <laughs> Lastly, we got Togekiss uh, with Super Luck as the ability, Scope Lens as the uh, item attached, and then the set of Dazzling Gleam, Protect, Air Slash, and Flamethrower. Yeah, uh, that's standard Togekiss. That's, I don't know if Scope Lens is necessary. 
I think I you should run I, weakness. Uh, I don't know because I'm like I don't know why he's doing scope. Like he's doing crit Togekiss. Yeah. I don't know why we Generally, have scope. Runs. I would think you would want Serene Grace, but maybe it's No no Super Luck uh, is used more Super Luck is used more right now. Um for because uh, you don't try to go for flinches, you're just trying to go for crits. Oh, you just want damage? You okay. just try to go for crits, yes. You just go for crits. You don't go for So I guess uh, he's doubling down on that with the scope lens. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been doing. They've just been like doubling down on crits. Okay. And so that's that's because like um if you you can go for Serene Grace, but so many things like uh, so many things like are setting their own statuses and stuff like that that it's just not worth it right now in VGC. Like this is that's standard Togekiss for VGC outside of like a, a weakness policy set or something. So that that's pretty standard. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think the Dragapult probably should be different, but that's just me. Um, if you don't want us to rip your teams apart and you want to send them in, please send descriptions and like plan team plans. That's a good pro tip. Some no some notes on them. Like, yeah, notes. Okay, this is here for that. Here's this is here for that. Like, yes. Because otherwise, we just have we have we have to guess. And if like, we have to guess, and if we don't see the specific reason, we're gonna we're, it's gonna sound like we're pooping on you, and that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. Uh, we're just trying to help make things better. Uh, but on that note, this is a good place to stop. You can send them in too, just like we said. Give us a thing. If not, next week we'll have more Pokemon for you. Probably slow, bro. If you have a Slowbro team, <laughs> send in the Slowbro team. Uh, maybe we'll use it. Uh, but yeah, we are going to go kick it on over to the mailbag. It's mail time! Send in your emails! Mail! And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the segment of the show where you can send emails into the show at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. Typically, we have a prompt for you guys, and the question typically is uh, something relevant uh, or something that I want to make myself feel good about because you guys send in awesome stories where you tell cool personal stories. So this week, we had you tell us whether or not you were enjoying Isle of Armor, and we got some emails from us. Oh, wait, I'm not there yet. (laughs) Um, And as always, this segment is brought to you by Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! There you that, go. Please? You get to see. <laughs> you get to see. I, I'm trying to like change up the format so people know what this segment is before they hear the hoofs and they get scared. <laughs> um, so if you have a good email, we'll give you what's known as the Green Taurus badge, which gives you a nice shiny green roll on our Discord server uh, for having a good, well, well-written email. So let's jump right into this email. These emails. Tell us how you feel about Isle of Armor. This first one is going to be from Coil Builder VGC, and it's all for you, Shamu. All right. Hey guys, Coil Builder here. I'm writing you guys only hours post DLC. I just got a day I am living the DL. I don't know. I just gotta say I am loving the DLC. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's supposed to mean. That's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Might be like Middle of Fortune. Like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take an S. <laughs> I think that the size of the area, the new Mons vibe, and everything else as well was well worth the fifteen dollars. I especially can't wait to see how the returning mods and new moves affect competitive play in July. Also something we are looking ahead to, that secret new game info TCP or TPCI will release in a week. Honestly if it's another Let's Go game, I will be very unhappy as a consumer. I think they could do anything from Diamond or Pearl remake to another dumb magic or mobile game. <laughs> anything would be more welcome than another Let's Go. Anyways, the next couple of weeks for me will be heavy with breeding new toys for VGC and having tons of fun with all the fun stuff this DLC has to offer. Stay safe, Coil Builder. So I will say, so we, I didn't, we didn't get to talk too much about it, but um, I will say that if it is Let's Go 2, I think I will be happy. And not because I'm going to buy Let's Go 2 and be like, yeah, this is the best game ever. It, it's mostly because I know if Let's Go 2 comes out, they're still going to be supporting Sword and Shield next year. Yeah, because they're yeah. very aware that these aren't the games for their main audience, and they supported Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon very, very much so post Let's Go launch. So I would expect them to support Switch. I mean, it's it's a bad business decision on the part of TPCI <laughs> because I I I would predict if they were to drop a Let's Go Pikachu EV two, um, that they would that they would sell like between eight to ten million copies max, like. If we're talking like a year and a half after release, that's where they're going to be at. Right. But I mean, if they follow the same recipe as they did for the first one. Yeah. Well, so like there's some issues that come with that as well. Like 
let's go was let's go because they're like let's get rid of a lot of the improvements we've made to pokemon exactly because we want to simplify it right and you can't really get gen 2 like if it was let's go johto let's say you can't really get let's go johto and kill like holding items or breeding because like those are such integral parts of those games like the after kanto the games are like the regions they exist because they were introducing new features right and i think when you like i guess you could start like integrating them in slowly but at what point are you just making a pokemon game right like (laughs) right like like let's go three comes out and it's just like abilities are here and it's just like cool so we just have the game Mm -hmm. uh we should put all the pokemon in so it's uh yeah that's kind of where i am with that um I, I don't think I don't think there's a point. I don't think they're going to do it. I really think Let's Go was a one-time thing that they were really doing to please Pop and Nintendo. Mm. That's kind of my thing. Like I think that hap- if it would have sold better, it would have definitely become like a full-time thing, 100%. I do want the Pokemon company though just to kind of take a break this year. I just want them to take a break. Like, hey, we've had like new games like four or five years in a row. Yeah, let's let's like sit down. <laughs> let's sit down. Uh, let's not worry about it. We don't take need to a do breather. That. Yeah, just like take a breather. Here, have a bottle of water. You know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that okay. That's good. We'll move on. Next email. <laughs> next email. This next one is going to be from N Harmonia, and this is Thatch. Thatch gets to do it. Hello, Thatch and co-hosts. N Harmonia writing in again. This Wednesday, I'd blissfully slept through the direct and missed out on very interesting news about the dental health app, but managed to catch <laughs> up soon enough to get to the DLC. I travel to the Island of Armor and the fo- Forest to Focus. What do I stumble upon but my precious child, a beautiful scolipede? Of course I used a Master Ball on him, and then spent the next three hours comb- combing through a forest for every Venipede I could find. I only used the finest luxury balls on them because my children only deserve the best. My fat little bugs gave me so much serotonin that I actually cried a little. I love scolipede very much, and I'm glad I gave him yet another Pokemon game. I get him in another Pokemon game. The best part was watching them follow me and using them against that smug boy Avery, and I actually enjoyed Pokemon Camp for once. The things I didn't quite enjoy about the DLC are few but still noteworthy. I don't like that Cramomatic machine doesn't really give you any useful balls. Yeah. I don't like the Diglett quest. I wish and wish they just cut it down to ten total. I like the Diglett quest. I think it's fun. <laughs> I kind of hate Sharpedo and wish they didn't spawn every five seconds when you're in the ocean. <laughs> uh, fun fact, it's not five seconds, it's three. I oh. found that out. God. And last but not least, Thatch, I'm sorry you can't have Totodile in the game. That's very true. That's fine. We got Rulu rolling. It's worth it. I got... Okay, you shut your mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got... That was the one thing. Like, everybody's like, oh, I'm so excited to have my Pokemon following you. Well, I would... This is the best thing ever. I wouldn't rather have this any other way. I'm like, it'd be nice if Totodile could follow me. And it's just like... And everybody's just like, oh. Well, what well, Thatch, Thatch, Thatch. You got you got hard gold and still silver. Yeah. It's not the same. It's not the that's and, that's and, what Juicy you, Nichi, that's what you Juicy want Masuda a just said to me. Following you, that's what you get. I want him in HD following me though. Uh, <laughs> that's what I want. Then you can play Mystery Dungeon DX, right? He's in that. Uh, no, he's not. Mystery Dungeon DX only goes up to Gen Four or Gen Three, uh, plus Lucario. Gen Total that was Gen Two. Oh yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, yeah, he's Gen Two. He is technically <laughs> in that. He is technically in that. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I blanked for a second and I don't know why. But it's not it's also not the same art style though either. Like I want to see him in the same art style as everybody else. Why can't he join the party? Alright, moving on. <laughs> okay, I need to get back to catching Venipedes and Harmonia blasting off at the speed of light. Thank you, Ann. Um alright, our next one is from Bam. Bam writes Hey, Pokemon crew, BAM! Here with my thoughts on the That's DLC. That's the perfect enun- pronunciation, by the way. That's like <laughs> spot on because it's not like too loud, but it, it emphasizes the exclamation point. Exactly. That's you have to say it right. I want to start by saying that I am extremely happy they put Kindra back in the game. I hope they add all the Pokemon's in the game before the end of Gen Eight, so that way everyone will be excited for their favorite Pokemon and Thatch can have its Tortodile back. Not in the email, but I wanted to point it out. He does say it, though, in the email. Oh, he does! <laughs> <laughs> bring back Totodile, hashtag. Hashtag bring back Totodile. <laughs> then they could just reuse the models for Gen 9. I did not 
get well so can everyone starts complaining in general anyway i did not get too far into the story honestly my bar for a pokemon game is very low it doesn't have all the pokemon in it yeah sure yeah that's my that's my bar they just have to like step people think that the people but yeah, just reuse them, and uh, yeah, people will just complain about I, that. I mean, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I, I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna give them some things. Like they did say they were like redoing the models from the ground up. Mm-hmm. I do believe that there was probably some issue with them moving them over to like. The oh, new for engine. sure. I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And because like if you look at the models, a lot of them are just like they. It what my explanation for a lot of them is they did recreate them. Like they had them on like one screen, like the old ones, and they were remaking them in their software on the new screen. Right and. And they're putting the polygons in, which is why you see slight differences and why they're just like, well, we could just make it easier if we did it like this or something like that. Right. And so that's why the polygon counts are very similar and stuff like that. But they're not quite the same. They did redo a lot of the textures, though. I will say that. They had to HD. Well, no, a lot of them are better, like way better. Well, I, if you oh. look up close, you can still see pixels. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of them, like they changed the colors and they changed the shading on some things. Like I think most notable is cottony in that case. I would say a lot of them do look better, though. Like, they changed a lot of the coloring and stuff like that, and it is much better. Nice. Teeny One here says, I did not get too far into, into the story, but I got Kindra and explored the whole island. I enjoyed the wild area more than the original wild area because of the uh, uh, because in the base game, I was looking for a new Gen 8 Pokemon, but this time, I just wanted to see which Pokemon were returning. I was like, I was like, gee... G- Go in the anime? Oh, Go. Go in the anime. His name's Go. Oh, that's his name with an H? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, his name is Go. It's like Pokemon Go or like Let's Go, but no, yeah. it's like It's really right. bad. Oh, have you watched the anime yet, Yushiro? Not yet. Okay, there's an episode. So I've watched all 12 episodes at this point. There's an episode where Go figures out he wants to catch Pokemon. It's still like six episodes in, which is surprisingly <laughs> late. And... <laughs> He he's like I'm gonna go catch Pokemon, and what was really weird was uh, I was watching this with my wife, mm. and we were watching it, and so he throws a Pokeball at like a Caterpie or something, and when the Pokeball hits, you just hear a random lady lady's voice, like nobody in the scene, because the only people are <laughs> Ash and Go, and it's a female voice, and it just says nice, and I was we were just like whoa 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 was that Ash saying that like we re- we like rewound and like watched the clip a couple times, we're yeah. like no that's not Ash. Um, because they were emulating the Pokemon Go when you got a when you get a nice oh throw, my God. and I'm just like, I hate this, <laughs> I oh, hate this so much. No. <laughs> it, that's the only time it happened, thankfully. It's right. the same thing with Tracy, except they would have called Stra- Tracy Snappy or something like that. Uh, I think Go overall is a good character in the anime, though. I would oh, say okay. That. No, yeah, well, no, he's actually enough. like a decent character. Like they they play off mm-hmm. each other. Like from what I haven't watched it myself, but apparently like Ash is just good at battles and nothing else. Yeah. But Go is actually like decent at other things, just not yeah. battle. Like they're, okay. they're, they're polar opposites in that aspect and they yeah. play well off each other. It works really well because I mean, you do need to have like the Pokemon Go style of catching to really show off all of the Pokemon that are possible. Right. I do have a couple like nitpicks again, like, cause you know, we, we just went through like this whole national decks thing mm-hmm. with like Dexit and everything, but like their Pokedexes, they'll pull up and they'll like read about Pokemon and it's going to, it has like the national decks number of the Pokemon, like fat on the screen <laughs> and and, like, they're just going around seeing all these Pokemon that you can't get in Sword and Shield. Oh. <laughs> it's just, like, it, it, it's, a, it's a very sobering moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a very sobering show, and you're just like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this, but it's better than it was. It's better than Alola, so I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I was, like, go in the anime as I went and caught every Pokemon I saw. I, and did I mention that Kindra is now in the game? The only thing that I dislike about the DLC is that Slowbro is the only new Galarian form. It gives me flashbacks of when Ultrason and Ultra Moon came out and they did not any add any new Alolan forms. Also, they should have done something about the levels. I beat the main game, so my rival is using level 60 Pokemon, but they are all not fully evolved. Other than that, I really like the DLC so far, and would have paid $30 just to have some more Pokemon back, so having the new area to explore is a bonus. I agree, <laughs> entirely. So let's say, I uh, also wanted to add uh, that a couple of hours after the direct, I listened to the episode nine, uh, 399 of your podcast, and you talked about how Pokemon Pot Snap 2 was never going to happen. Oh, classic. I also don't want people getting their hopes up too high for the direct later this week, because Ishihara 
had a lot of Johto Pokemon behind him, including the Inespion and Umbrian in front of the Let's Go games. So I think uh, we will hear about Let's Go Espion and Let's Go Umbrian. I hope it's not the case, but at least Kindra will be in that game. But enough about Kindra. I need to go finish the DLC so I can build a competitive team around Kindra. Thank you so much for the, all the wonderful content. Bam! Bam! What does that Bam. actually lead into the Colosseum part? Thinking I didn't think about that. I feel yeah, Umbreon being in part like that was the main two Pokemon of Colosseum. That you yeah, that's through. that's what the Reddit post was all about. That makes actually I didn't I didn't catch that earlier. That actually makes some sense. Like I I could see them doing something with Colosseum. The only thing is they've never done anything like that before. No, they haven't. Where they've like referenced but it, like but we are getting a brand new title, so it could be uh, another installment in that series we or Pokemon that. Moba. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Depending on how they do that, that might not be terrible. It might be okay. I might actually play a MOBA. Yeah. All right. On that note, uh, thank you for that. If you want to send an email in next week, you can do so at pucklepodcast.gmail.com. Let us know what you think of the DLC. I think we'll just reuse the question this week. Get more people have time to play it. Yeah, yeah. more people have time to play it, like Chushiro. Yeah. <laughs> Full feedback on Monday, I promise. Yes. Uh, all right. But on that note, we, we really appreciate it, guys. Um, green Taurus badge for any of these guys, you think? Uh, uh, I really like, uh, Bam. 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 Oh, or Anharmonia made me laugh, but I don't, I, I have a feeling that Anharmonia might already have the batch. Uh, that's a good question. I can find that out real quick, because she's probably on the server. <laughs> 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 she's probably on the server. She's always on the server. Um, she's online. Is she, uh, is she online? I don't see it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't actually see it. I don't actually see her for once. Oh, well, there you go. Green Taurus for Anamonia. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, no, she doesn't have it this year. Yeah, and, and you get it. Yeah. Boom. Uh, hashtag bring back Totodile. <laughs> 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 All right. So moving on then, if you want to send it in, like I said, PucklePodcast.com. If you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can go to Discord. All right, check out our Discord. The link is in the show notes. Just hang out with us all the time. It's a good time. We are typically in voice chat all the time. It's like a podcast, but you get to talk. Please talk. <laughs> Sometimes people just come in to like listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I really know. weird. Yeah. It's really weird. Uh, all right. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll end it here. We'll say uh, so thank you to that. If you want to keep up with us on social media, you can go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can go ahead and also... You can also keep up with us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast, on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash Puckle Podcast, um, where we're dropping things like the Puckle Plays Fire Red. And you can also go ahead and jump into uh, a number of other things uh, over there. Um, but if you'd like to participate and help support the community, you could one, just sub to us on Twitch uh, with your Twitch Prime membership for free. You could also go ahead and buy something at Tee Public. Or you can use code Puckle at checkout for Vite Ramen to get yourself uh, some yummy ramen and get a check uh, 10% off coupon. And in addition to that, you can go ahead and um, what's the word? You can uh, you can go ahead. Patreon. And, uh, Patreon. That's the one. That's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Patreon at patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast. So uh, on that note, though, I think that's everything. We really appreciate you guys listening and we hope to see you next week. We will uh, catch you on the flip-flop. I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been Shamu. And some say, and we're just here. And here in the Lavender Town, for your tower, it's closing time.